Far east of the Sword Coast, the Shadowvar and Discoverin have fallen. The Shadow Storm is no more. Sembia is fractured into city-states. A mysterious hero rises from the ashes to usher in a new era of prosperity. Yet there is still suffering. Cormir and the wild elves of the Dale Lands offer war on all sides. Earth motes, madness, and shadow dragons plague the lands. These are the tales of the heroes who ended that suffering. 1491 DR, the year of Sembian revival. This space is just the same, so, so foreign to me. My friend, it will take you some time to adjust. It has been a millennia since your eyes could move on their own. I am Icosios, head minister in this temple. You know me, but you have not said my name for a while. You are, are what they once called Sphinx, yes? That is what I am called in the common tongue. It seems you do remember some things after all. Do you remember who you are and how you came to be here? No. I suppose that may be for the best. Your name is Hashka. I am a human. <laughs> Definitely not. But you have now assumed a humanoid form. Why? I mean... Why now? You have been... activated. Activated? It seems as though I was... dreaming for so long. And I am awake now. You weren't dreaming, my friend. You were in your animal form. You were here, with the other ministers, with me, waiting to be called. My... my animal form? Yes, after your... Uh, incident, I brought you here. Almost immediately, you assumed the form of an owl, and you have been here ever since, waiting. And you say I have been here for a millennium? How is that possible? You do not age as mortals age. In fact, you do not age as other Asimon age. Asimon? You are a deva, a being of angelic origin, but one I have not encountered before. Why does my back hurt? It appears that even after 1,000 years, your wounds have not fully healed. Yes, there, there is a lingering pain, but, but it is manageable. I mentioned the incident earlier. When I found you, you were but tattered flesh and light. Your wings were torn from your body. Irreparable. No magic could fix what was done to you. Did I speak to you then? What did I tell you of this incident? Just your name. You could hardly speak. Your physical body was fading. Yet I did not pass to the light. As I said, when I brought you here, you assumed your animal form. In that form, you were whole again. And I imagine your true form was slow to heal from the damage you sustained. I do not know if you will ever truly heal from the wounds you sustained. But how did I come to be wounded, such? That would be quite a tale. Are you able to stand? I think so. Walk with me. I have something to show you. What is it? I found you in the desert. It was night and you appeared before me in a flash. When the light faded, there were two lights still burning. Your aura was but a faint, dim light, but beside you, there was something burning in the desert sand. Something burning? Yes, look. Do you see it? A burning blade? At El Sun, it began burning again, just as you regained this form. 
I have not seen flames on the sword since I brought you here many years ago. Well, what does it mean? Everything in the multiverse has only one meaning. One purpose. That, that I don't understand. Oh, you will. Can you explain it to me then? <laughs> My friend, if I could do that, there would be no need for me. You speak in riddles. I am a sphinx. What do you expect? I can feel a calling. A calling inside of me. You have been selected for a task, it seems. And your path may lie beyond the sand and the air. What do you mean? Tell me what you see when you close your eyes and focus on this calling. I see... I see a dark place. There's a tower and a river. By the water, I, I see purple flowers. I see a crystal and a floating city. I see a mausoleum. Tablets. So, so many things. I can't make sense of them. You see your future before you in images. That is how we see the calling. Everything all at once. You will learn to focus it. Tell me of the Burning Sword. What do you know of it? I know that the ministers here used to talk about the sword as if it spoke to them. And that if anyone tried to hold the blade, the fire immediately extinguished. Try it. You want me to hold the blade? Why not? It is your sword. Incredible. Indeed. The flame burns with twice the intensity of any I have encountered. What did you say? I have said nothing. No, no. The sword. Yes, I, I can hear you. Celestia, that is your name. The blade is speaking to you? Yes. The blade is called Celestia. I do not know its origins. Perhaps in time it will be revealed to you. Perhaps it will reveal my origin to me. Yes, and maybe they are one and the same. Where did it go? It told me that I can call it again, but will when needed. Try it. Remarkable. I think I'll put it away for now. Akosius, thank you for welcoming me here all those years ago, and for helping me now piece together my past. We serve the same calling. It is of the Alpha and the Omega. I have not heard this calling. And you will not hear it, nor will you be granted gifts from the Hidden One. Then how do you know there is a calling? There are signs all around us. We exist, after all. You have been activated after all this time. And most importantly, there are forces at work here in the multiverse that wish to exert their authority onto the written laws of the cosmos. And you serve those laws? In a very literal sense. You mentioned seeing tablets in your mind. Yes. For just a moment I saw them. I believe you are seeing the Tablets of the One. I do not know my place in this. That is beyond my comprehension. As are all of the laws of the multiverse. All we can do is uphold the Order and adhere to the tenets of the Hidden One. May I teach you our mantra here in the Temple? Yes. P please. In the eight, there is but one. Watch the sky. In the one, there is a multitude. You hear them. For the multitude, there are the powers. We stand asunder. For the powers, there are the tablets. We protect. What exactly are the tablets? The tablets, all the rules of the heavens are written, the aspect and portfolio of each god, the limit of power of each primordial, the makeup of the sea of night, 
the lines of the multiverse are drawn upon them. They are everything. And so the ministers are here to protect the Tenefas. I was the last of the ministers of Ao before you awoke. The other servants of the Overgod have all gone to rest, and I myself have little time left. How can two ministers serve such a being? Soon there will be only one, and you will have to answer that question for yourself. Tell me what I should do. How am I to protect something I have only just learned about? Inside you, there is a story that is coming to a grand resolution. You have seen snapshots of this story in your mind. You must now assemble them into the correct one. The flowers. Yes? The purple flowers I saw, I can smell them. There is a sweetness in the cool, damp air of the river I told you about. Then, focus your attention there. Unlike other ministers of Ao, your race of beings have been granted an innate ability to travel the plains at will. I hear loud flapping wings. Something big. There are the voices. Come now. Of three. Before the hounds no, themselves four. Feet. Before Fargo knows we They're are walking going into on. a trap. They must have a part to play in the fate of the tablets. <laughs> the fate of the tablets of fate. Oh, the irony. Will I see you again? Time will tell, my friend. For the powers, there are the talents. We protect. Goodbye, friend. Thank you for everything. Though this marks the end of the episode, the tale continues within a 10 day. Join us at longwinded.one and consider giving us a review on Apple Music, Spotify, or really whichever platform you choose.